Okay, students, welcome to another day in the kitchen. Here we are, time for some winter festivities and there's nothing like the holidays to say, bring it on, let's make some candy. So today we're gonna go ahead and be working with making some homemade caramels. I have previously washed my hands, so 20 seconds, wash, 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 but I am not gonna wear gloves because again, I'm gonna be working over the cooktop. I have read through the instructions, I have assembled my ingredients and my measuring equipment, and I am ready to start. But before we do that, I want you to take your recipe and down on step number four, if you would, I want you to change this to 230 degrees. What am I changing you to? 230. That is the dentist time, 230. Oh, anyway. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is not do number one, but do number two. And in my large Dutch oven, I want to have this be a large pan because as it boils and boils and boils, it can go almost like up and over the sides if you're not careful. So I've gone ahead and got my large Dutch oven out. If you are at home, you could use just your largest pan. It's better to have too much room than not enough. And then I am taking and measuring out two complete tables or two complete cups of butter and putting it in my pan. I'm also going to add in a half a cup of butter and this butter, um, I like to use butter here rather than margarine. I think it's the old school in me that really likes to do it, but margarine will also work. We'll pop that in, and then we're gonna add in some corn syrup. Corn syrup is a liquid type of sugar. It has been extracted from corn, like its uh, name says, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and measure that, then I'm gonna tell you about it. I am going to use a liquid measuring cup, and I'm gonna squish down here at eye level, and I'm gonna put in one cup. And I'm gonna make a mess while I do it because I try to spin it around. You'd be a little bit better than me. And when this comes even with my one cup line, I'm gonna call it good. And I'll pick this up and with my flexible spatula, I'm gonna put this into my pan. The caramel making is pretty, oh, it's easy, but it requires a lot of patience. And as you can see on step number two, I am gonna be taking and putting these two things in a, my Dutch oven, and then I'm gonna start stirring it. Now that is all that we're gonna add in right now. I know, sugar and butter. What's gonna happen here is the sugar is actually going to melt down. And uh, as it melts down, it's going to change both in color and it's also going to change in flavor. And due to chemistry, it's also going to be um, recombining all of its bonds to create a new substance. It's gonna go from being granular and runny to um, thickening up and, and becoming the texture of our, our caramels. The butter you can see is starting to melt and I'm just gonna take my wooden spoon, or in this case, we're using our silicone spoon, and I'm just gonna stir this around and stir it around. The reason why I'm gonna maintain the stirring is that it's kind of hot. I have this on, what temperature? Look at your instructions, medium. And you can go to low, it'll just take a lot longer, but if you up this ante up to high, cause you're in a hurry, the chances of you burning this caramel is greatly increased. The caramel is gonna, you're just basically going to be cooking this and cooking this until the uh, chemistry of the sugar starts to change. Now, back to this ingredient right here, this corn syrup. Maybe you might know it by Caro. This uh, is actually a pretty good ingredient to have in candy making. There is nobody on the planet who's going to say that corn syrup is healthy. No one on the planet who's going to say uh, um, two cups of sugar is healthy. But boy, when it comes to eating caramel, we sure love it. Um, the corn syrup does a, a pretty nice thing for our caramels. That is that it takes the um, potential of sugar crystals developing inside of our caramel and cuts it down to almost zero. It stops sugar crystals from growing. 
If I were to make caramel and have all of a sudden these chunky hard pieces of sugar crystals, maybe some of you have even made sugar crystals in your, in your science classes or labs, uh, you know, they're kind of cool on one side, but they're not cool inside of caramels. So we're going to have that corn syrup as kind of an aid to us. Now step number two says I'm going to stir this constantly until the mixture boils. Well, it's not going to boil until all of that butter is melted. So I'm going to kind of do a little bit of jump from A to B and I'm going to go backwards now to step number one. Then I'm going to come back and stir. Then I'm going to go to number one. I'm going to come back and stir. All right, so let's look at step number one on your instructions. Step number one on your instructions say that you are going to be buttering an eight by eight square cake pan. And you'll be provided one of these pans by me. Now don't be surprised if some of them look a little bit beaten because truly some of them are a little bit beaten. We've made a lot of caramel here at Hillcrest Junior High and sometimes the pan um, isn't well enough buttered and the caramel sticks. So we're going to give you, you're going to have a little bit of butter. I'm going to grab a little bit of wax paper. Wax paper, of course, is in your kitchen. And I'm going to take that butter and pull off the wrapper that's on it. I may or may not use all of that butter. I'm going to just pop that down for a second while I wrap this around my pan. And then I'm going to grab that butter and I'm just going to butter the bottom. My feeling is it's a lot easier to take and remove the excess melted butter from off the top of my caramel. Let me stir, let me stir, let me stir. Excess amount of butter from off the top of my caramel than it is to get my stuck caramel from out of the pan. Pay particular attention to your corners and edges down there because that's a lot of times where the sticking happens. This excess butter we're going to toss and now you can see I've started to boil, so I'm going back to step number two. This is well buttered, wouldn't you say? It's got a lot of butter sitting around in there. And I'm back here stirring my pot. So this has come, it says, um, to a boil. Then it says we're going to add in a sweetened condensed milk. Now we've just finished talking about sweetened condensed milk, and you know that sweetened condensed milk is basically evaporated milk, and it's got a whole lot of sugar added into it. Yes, it's delicious. Yes, it's yummy. Yes, it's not good for you. So number three says you're gonna take and add this milk to your mixture right here, and you're gonna add it so slowly that the mixture doesn't stop boiling. I'm gonna grab my little can right here. I'll scrape off the top and then you might have one of your partners help you with this. You're going to start drizzling this in here and you're going to stir it in and you're going to be able to put it in. You know, I wish you could see from the side perspective right here that I'm adding this in here and I'm just stirring it in and as long as the mixture's boiling, I can keep adding it. I don't want to put a thread in it, just a teeny tiny bit because maybe then my whole mixture will caramelize by the time I get to um, even halfway of the pan. Now I've kind of slowed down a little bit of boiling so I'm going to pull back a little bit on that uh, sweetened condensed milk. It's still boiling, you can see around the edges but let's give it just a half a little bit of time to come back up. While I'm waiting for this to come back boiling, I want to make mention of the burner size. On your stovetop, you have, if you're on the electric stoves, you only have two different sizes. You've got two big ones and two little ones. On the gas ones, you have a couple of different sizes. You're going to get the largest burner possible because you've got the biggest pan. Right, look at I'm back to boiling and now I'm going to go ahead and return back to stirring in some of that sweet and condensed milk. When you choose the burner to work on, you choose the biggest one because that way it's going to cover the bottom of the pan. If you put this on a little teeny tiny burner, you will never get done. Okay, I'm starting to kind of slow down on that boil. So I'm going to pull back just a touch. I've still got it boiling around the edges, but it's not quite as much as it used to be. So let's go ahead and give it just a minute to catch up. Kind of a slow process. 
ooh, I can smell the yummy goodness of it all. And I want you to be kind of watchful of how the color's gonna change. Okay, it's coming back up to a nice boil. So let's go back in, add some more in. Again, I'm just drizzling it. Just kind of keep an eye on that boiling. And I'm stirring the bottom. I'm kind of getting around the edges, trying to scrape off anything that might be on that hot bottom of the pan as it gets on the hot bottom of the pan. All right, looks like I'm pretty much out of my sweet and condensed milk but it's awful sticky. So we are gonna come back to this flexible spatula and we're gonna scrape that out, scrape it out, and get it all in there. If you've never tasted sweetened condensed milk, I suggest you put your finger on that and give it a quick little taste. And back to stirring. Now comes the real patience. Now comes the real patience because on step number four, it says that you're gonna stir it until the mixture reaches 230 degrees on a candy thermometer. Your head chef will have picked up a candy thermometer and I need you to make sure that somebody in your group can read it. If you can't read it, then you gotta get me over real fast. We're gonna put this candy thermometer into our pot, but you're gonna notice that on the back side, oh my goodness, this has two. There is a little clip that you can use to put it on the side of the pan. I really like this candy thermometer. First off, because it's got a protective shield over the bulb of the thermometer. And secondly, because um, it holds the bottom of the thermometer off the bottom of the pan. So I'm gonna take this right here, this little clip, and I'm gonna clip it on the side of my pan. Now truly I wish you could see this. I'm gonna kinda crunch down here low, I don't know if you can see my head, and I'm gonna tell you that it's rising up, and right now I'm at 180 degrees. And the interesting thing is you make caramel is that it will go in starts and stops. So it'll speed real fast up, and then it'll slow down, and it'll sit for a while. And again, what's happening is chemically, bonds are breaking and recombining. And as that happens, it's causing the color and the flavor to change, it's caramelizing. Right now, I moved up a little bit to 200. Keeping my eye on this, I'm just gonna keep stirring this, stirring this, but I can't look away. You've gotta have somebody right there on it you are gonna be like aching as you watch this. And again, remember, we're going to 230 degrees. Now, <clears throat> when you're cooking this, we talked about these chemical bonds breaking and recombining. We are changing this um, to have different texture. If I cook it too low, let's say that I just cook it to 215, I'm gonna have caramel sauce. If I cook it to 250, I'm gonna have like, do you know what Werther's are? I'm gonna have a hard toffee. All the same ingredients, but cooked to a different temperature. So it's really important that you keep an eye on the temperature and then when you get at the end, you have to move fast. You have to move super fast. But in the process of moving super fast, you've gotta be super careful. A person that makes candy is called a confectioner. And a confectioner is really practiced at knowing colors, um, knowing aromas, um, knowing textures and when to cook them. Um, you've maybe heard of confectioner sugar. That was a sugar that was created especially for a candy maker. Um, the confectioner sugar is used in a lot of different things. We use it a lot in frosting, don't we? Um, but a confectioner is a candy maker. Can you see how the color is slightly turning to a beautiful, very pale tan, but it's kind of a caramel color. All right, moving along. Keeping an eye, keeping an eye on it. Just stirring and stirring. The thermometer, again, is not touching the bottom. I wanna show you a different type of thermometer and maybe you might end up using this if you were to be doing it at home. Um, this is a type of candy thermometer that we've got here. This one right here is one that you can buy in your grocery stores. 
Maybe you've seen that. These are great, they're affordable. The biggest problem I have with them is there's so much glass and if you are not careful, you can break them, but they will work. This is another type of candy thermometer. Maybe you've seen something like this. It too has a clip that you're gonna go ahead and put in on the, um, on the side of your pan. And you're just gonna patiently be stirring, stirring, stirring. While you're waiting for all these things to come to a boil, why don't you go ahead and clean up? Get these things all taken here, out of here, out of here, out of here. And I'm gonna leave me just with my vanilla, which is gonna go in at the very, very end. I don't put it in right now because the vanilla will evaporate as I cook. And I'm just gonna keep stirring. Now you can check your thermometer. I am just a little bit worried about mine. I'm gonna grab a second one. Um, you can check your thermometer, or your caramel, excuse me. You can check it as you, I'm gonna pull this guy out. I think he's got a little issue. I hate to do that in the middle of a demonstration, but I'm gonna do it. Um, you can check your caramel to see what kind of texture it has by using, if you were at home, to, at school we don't have time for it, but you're gonna use your um, uh, candy thermometer to really be your final say. But I could see where this is gonna be at room temperature by putting a little bit of this into ice cold water. My ice is kind of melting, a little touch in there. Give it just a second. And then you can reach in there and you can find out what that would be like at room temperature. You can see it's kind of all come together, but it's still really super, super, super soft and sticky. So not good enough yet. Not good enough yet. Keep mixing, keep mixing. Again, I'm about 210 right now. So I'm getting close to the stage I want to be at. In candy making, there is a a softball stage, there's a hardball stage, and that's not like soft, like you're playing the baseball game. There is a, what's called a soft crack stage and a hard crack stage. Those are all candy making terms and you're gonna see them on your thermometer. But they are for um, sea level and we're above sea level. So we're gonna be just cooking to about 230, but we have to be ready to move as soon as it hits 230. Right now, and again, there's two sides to your thermometer. I had to mention that too. There's a Fahrenheit side and there's a Celsius side. Make sure you're looking at the Fahrenheit side. I'm coming up on 220. I'm still not where I wanna be, but can you see how, how sweet that color's starting to come in? And I'm stirring all of the time. Make sure your spoon's long. If it's not long, your fingers get down there. Can you imagine how much that would hurt if it blopped onto your skin? We're talking hot lava. All right, I'm spotting, I'm spotting. I'm at 220. I'm coming along, I'm coming along. I'm maybe at 225. I'm still working it, still working it. Keep stirring, scraping that bottom off. If you see any uh, kind of dark brown freckles, can I call them that? That's burn coming up from the bottom. You haven't been stirring good enough. All right, come on, just a little bit more, little bit more. Not my candy thermometer, 230 isn't even marked. I've got to spot the line of where it's gonna be. And I'm looking right straight across at it, not from the top down. You gotta keep it going. Can you see how beautiful that lovely golden color? It's almost the color of our cabinets. That's a caramel color. We use that a lot in cooking that color. Caramelizing caramel color, light brown. Kind of a nice thing about our cabinets here at school, I can judge it. I bet I'm at 227, but I'm not quite to 230. So I'm keeping on working it, keeping on working it. I'm looking, I'm looking, and I think, I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm at 229, 229, and I'm calling it at 230. At this point, I'm immediately pulling it off, and I'm gonna start doing some pretty fast action. 
the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my thermometer out. And as your instructions say, you're going to put it right smack dab into your sink. Hot water, not cold. Hot water, and don't touch that because that will burn you really bad. Don't think you can lick it. You can't. All right, so we're going to stir this real quick. Stir it real quick. Let me pull it over where I know you can see it. Sorry, stir it real quick. Not a beautiful color. Color of caramel. Stir it real quick. Let me just show you what it's going to be like when it gets to room temperature. I take this right here, all slicky sticky. I'll put it in there. I'll come back in a minute. But I got to work fast here because I got to get it out of this hot pan. But I got to get the vanilla in there first. I have a half a teaspoon of vanilla. No, 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 no. Remember, over the countertop. Better to clean up the countertop than ruin all that beautiful caramel. Pop that in there. Put your lid on. Get that stirred in just as fast as you possibly can. Oh, yum, 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 yum. Get that all stirred in. And now the last thing that you're going to do is you're going to get somebody to help you. This is going to be a little weird for me, a little bit tough for me. I'm going to pour this into my pan, my buttered pan. Oh, that looks beautiful. Beautiful. And now I'm going to try to figure out how I can hold this heavy pan and scrape it at the same time. What the heck? That is hard for me to do. Using your spoon, you're going to want to get out as much caramel as you possibly can because whatever you don't scrape out into your uh, cake pan, you're going to have to wash off in the sink. And then wasting all that beautiful caramel. Put that in there. Oh, it's getting cooled down because I can see it being stretchy and messy. Again, this is like 200 degrees, my friends. You cannot lick it. You cannot. You will burn your tongue. You'll burn your finger. You'll burn everything that there is that can be touched and that. That'll be hot and bad. Okay? <clears throat> now, at this point, you're going to put this into a sink full of hot water. Hot water's your friend. It'll melt it off. If you put this pan into cold water, it's going to set up. And then you're going to be scrubbing it at a different level. So quickly, into the water, into the sink. Get that soaking. This right here, the pan will be ouch hot, ouch hot. Don't move it. You're going to put your pan right there onto what maybe your supply tray. And you're going to just bring it on up to be at the demonstration bar. We will go ahead and put a piece of foil over the top of it that says kitchen two, period four, whatever it happens to be. And then we have to let it sit and cool down. And when it gets to room temperature, let's move some of these things out of the way. What is my caramel going to be like? Ooh, it's ice cold in here, maybe a little bit too cold. It's going to be nice and sticky and stretchy and yummy and delicious and a wonderful treat for, for Christmas. I'll show you in the flip side on a second video how you're going to cut that and get it out of the pan and cut it. And then you'll be able to enjoy them. Caramels, delicious, fun, something that's part of the uh, um, holiday season, I'm for sure. So happy holidays and happy cooking. We'll see you. Bye.